six hundred and twenty six episodes of the Working Class Bowhunter podcast. It's hard to say. I kind of just slurred all that. Six hundred twenty six. Six two six. That's too many podcasts. Too many. Are we gonna quit? I'm tired, boys. Kurt Geyer speaking. <laughs> Eric Hobbit. Doug Schmidt. Special guest of the hour. Keaton Minnick. Thanks for being here, man. Absolutely, for coming, man. I appreciate it. It's been about two years in the making. I feel like. So. Yes. Yeah. We met you. Up. First time at the Iowa Deer Classic, I think. Yeah, I met you back in um, 2020, actually. Yep. So mutual friends, Nick Kaiser, sent you over to the booth and just yeah. been friends ever since. Yeah. So. Yeah. You are a talented guy. Well, I appreciate that. You are making a very necessary, very necessary, useful works of art. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. I really do. How the hell did you get into making <laughs> pedestals, dude? Yeah, so I'll go back to the, clear back to the beginning uh, when I was younger uh, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents and uh, my grandpa would woodwork. And so I would go down the shop and kind of watch him do stuff. And um, it got to where he would send me home with uh, stacks of wood. And he got me my first tool set and everything. So I'd go home and down in my parents' basement, you know, it'd make them a little upset. But I would cut on this wood and pound nails and all kinds of stuff. And yeah. um, I got into 4 H. And so my grandpa and I every summer would build woodworking projects. And, um, it was just something that just continued to grow year after year. And I remember the last one we built together was a gun cabinet for my dad. And um, like I said, it was something I looked forward to every summer. And uh, going into my sixth grade year, I lost my grandpa in June about a month before uh, 4-H. And um, at the funeral, he was presented a flag for his service in Korea in the United States Army. So I told my mom, my grandma, I said, this year I really don't want to do a project. And I was really down and out about losing my grandpa. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. And I was like, you know, I just, I want to sit out this year of doing a 4-H project. And uh, my grandma told me, hey, you know, grandpa would want you to do it. So go ahead and do it. So uh, what I ended up doing was building a flag case to display the flag that he was presented, or my grandma was presented at the funeral. And uh, my cousin stepped up and helped me. And like I said, I mean, this was two weeks after he passed away. So we're back in his shop using the same tools. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, oh, all those memories man, yeah, back in yeah. and stuff, right? So it was hard. But uh, we got through it, made him proud, and got it done. But getting into the cedar side of it uh, is where my other grandparents come into play. And uh, I was going into my sophomore year of high school. That's actually when I started the business. Mm-hmm. And um, my See, grandpa, that's crazy, man. That's sophomore. Yeah, it's <laughs> 10 years now. Yeah, well, that's wild. That's yeah. really wild. That is wild. Um, so he had given me some cedar off of his farm that he cut out of some ditches and some wind, wind rows. And, um, I decided I want to make a cedar bench. So, uh, put this cedar bench together, took it up to the local county fair. And within about 20 minutes, I had a lady come up to me and ask me what I would take for that bench I built. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I'm not going to part with that. You know, that's, it means something to me. It came off my grandparents' farm and stuff, but I'll build you one. And right there, it kind of hit me. I was like, man, I might be able to make a business out of this. Yeah. And at the same time, I was involved in FFA. Mm-hmm. And I had the best advisor in the world, Miss Sondag. Big shout out to you. Um, so I was like, well, I'm going to make this my SAE project. Mm-hmm. And uh, I shot her a prize and she took it. And so from there on, I got back to school that fall and I started the business, got my social media page up and going. And um Talked to Miss Sondag. We put together a business plan, everything you do to start a business. Yeah. And um, I got into my first fall festival. I remember I got home from a school dance about 1 o'clock in the morning. And 4.30, my dad woke me up. And uh, my neighbor at the time was doing auctions, so my dad would help him do auctions on the weekend. So we loaded up in the family vehicle, went down, got this auction set up, and then went out and set up these benches at this local fall festival. 38 degrees, sat there all day, didn't sell a single thing. Nah. <laughs> so at that time, you know, it's hitting you. They it's were like, cheap there. They yeah, were cheap. Yeah, exactly. No, it's hitting you. It's like, you know, is this going to really work? Mm-hmm. And so um, I got into another fall festival the next weekend, and the same thing happened. Like, we went all day not selling anything. And then the last five minutes of the show, this lady came up and ordered two, two uh, benches, which was well worth my time. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it kind of continued to grow from there, and I started doing – more and more uh, furniture projects until my senior year of high school. I met four guys that started a real estate company, Iowa Land Company, mm-hmm. Skinner Brothers. And um, the summer prior, I was blessed to do a uh, food plot project with them. And I was, you know, like I said, I was getting into hunting at the time too. And I was really learning about learn, learning a lot about hunting from them. And um, they told me they're taking a booth to the Iowa Deer Classic, which I'd never been to the Iowa Deer Classic before. Yeah. And they're like, hey, we want you to build a booth. And then can you build these two deer bases? I'm like sure. I mean, we'll try it. I've You've never, never built, done a deer base. Never built that. a deer base in my life. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, time or a <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Of all places, you <laughs> yeah. know. 
And so I went out there. I mean, it would be midnight, one o'clock in the morning on school nights. My mom's telling me to come back in. You know, I'm out here trying to figure this out. And uh, got this project put together for him. And I remember posting the Wednesday before the Iowa Deer Classic. And like, I got this social media post up on there and everything. And this guy reached out to me. He's like, hey, I want to order one of those pedestals. I'm like, well, I'm not really selling them. <laughs> I, just made I just it. got yeah. them done. And <laughs> just figuring this out, brother. <laughs> I got to looking at who he was. And I'm like, holy smokes. He's a film producer for a show I watch. Uh-huh. And it's just really cool. So we hit it off. And um, like an hour later, I was sitting there in bed and had another order come in. I was like, you know, there might be something here. Mm-hmm. So... Going to that Friday, we went up to the Iowa Deer Classic. Skinner's invited us up to um, check out the booth and walk around. So I took two of my good buddies and my dad. And I remember printing off these little crappy business cards <laughs> downstairs. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to go up there. I've got nothing to offer to anybody here. I'm going to go up there. I'm going to shake hands, introduce myself, talk about my business, and see what I can do for them. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. You ne- never know. Network of never, yeah. You never know what's going to happen. the biggest thing. Exactly. Yeah. And like I said, I'm 18 years old. I'm in high school. I mean, just going for I'm it. just starting, right? Yeah. So I get up there, and, dude, I met some incredible people that I'm really close with today and doing business with today. I mean, it gives me chills talking about it. But the one thing I wanted to point out was I remember walking down this hallway, and the next year I had a booth in that hallway, and you guys were podcasting in a closet. Yep. And that was the very first time I heard about the working class. I just saw you guys kind of bopping in and out of there and saw your sign on the, <laughs> yeah, we had the oh, closet. Yeah. Like you know, masking and, tape to the yeah, door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our little so, room. Yeah. It's just, it's crazy that next year um, I had a booth in that row and you guys were still podcasting, I believe, in 18 in that closet, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then the next year you got a booth and stuff. Yep. Um, and then another one, too, I want to hit on was... Like, you guys know how crazy that Friday is at the Deer Classic. Like, it's oh. nuts. Yeah. Right? So there was a, a guy I'd been talking to back and forth. Um, he was working for a well-known company at the time, and we've been talking back and forth on social media. And so I sat there in line for probably 10 minutes. I mean, people are around trying to get into this booth. And I remember getting up there to talk to him, and this still sticks out to me today. Like, he didn't rush our conversation. He sat there and talked to us. Like, people are getting behind us, getting impatient and stuff. Yeah. And... um like, we ended up becoming good friends, doing some business together. And that's, like, the same mentality I try to bring into my booth. I don't want to rush anybody along. You guys know how busy it gets. You're trying yeah. to get everybody through and stuff. But um, that just really meant a lot to me because I knew, like, I had nothing to offer. I mean, I bought some product and stuff. But still, he just heard our story, heard what we were doing, and yeah. became a big supporter. So That's awesome. That's, all, that's um, Dude, That's the hunting industry is good. Like it is. That, yeah, it really know. is. I mean, you hear about a lot of the bad side of it. It's entertaining. It, it is. Be, yeah. It is for sure. But like when you find your group, you're good. And that's like you guys hit on that back in episode 500. Like the older you get, the more you want to surround yourself with good people. Yeah. And that's very important in business is, you know, find your group, stay loyal to your group and help your group. Yeah, and sometimes it takes you a little bit to find it. You mm-hmm. go through trial and error. You make yeah. some mistakes. Mm-hmm. And we, we, that's the thing. We've cr- clearly documented all our mistakes. It's like, <laughs> right. to hide. Go back and Absolutely. You, go yeah. back and let's do it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like, that's so true. Like, yep. you know, you get into it, you know who to be around, what Absolutely. directions to go, who's Absolutely. good, who's who's been around and is going to mm-hmm. be around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're 100% right. I want to go back a little bit. Like, shout out to your teacher for, like, getting you a business plan going and oh, stuff. That's like, crazy. She's amazing. Dude, that's, like, that's cool. Because, like, well. school these days, they just push mm-hmm. college on you. They yep. push all the shit. But, like, they don't say, hey, go start a business. Yeah, exactly. No, that's awesome. No, uh, Miss Sondag's the best. I mean, her FFA program is incredible. Um, like, I'm still using things I learned in her class today. Yeah. Like that's... actual life lessons. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just, it may, it breaks my heart that there are kids in this country that won't have an advisor like her. That's mm-hmm. right. It's I mean, actually pretty rare. It's, man. Really rare man. it's, it's amazing. And trust me, like my buddies and I weren't always the easiest in her class. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, we're, so, we were all shit. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. But dude, she, yeah. I mean, she loved us and she took care of us and she, uh, especially on the SAE stuff, like that was huge for her. Like she'd come do farm visits in the summer and I mean, it's. I owe a lot to FFA, and one day when my businesses grow, I'm going to be a huge financial supporter of FFA. Yeah, just because what it does for kids. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. huge. It's incredible. But I don't think I had one at my high school. Oh man, you missed out. <laughs> yeah, it was we amazing. had one. It was very small, but now, like, I feel like it's getting like they built this huge building at our mm-hmm. local school for the FFA because it's getting so big these days. Oh, absolutely. And welding's a big part of it too. Oh yeah. I mean, yep. they got huge weld- welding programs and yep. stuff. So. Hmm. No, very thankful for that. That was a huge part of my business growing, too. That's so. cool, dude. I, that's cool. Like, the snowball. Have you done a podcast before about this? Because, damn, you... First time. Really? Ever? 
Mm-hmm. You're killing it. You were built for this. The props to you, too. <laughs> like, an 18-year-old kid just walking up and shaking. Like, I don't know. At 18, yeah. I don't think I would have done that. <laughs> I want, it's something I wanted I to do. I walked by yeah. people at the Iowa show just like, oh, Ooh. God, there they are. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to run uh, away. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's nerve-wracking for sure, but people really aren't as bad as you think. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. A lot of people, now, like, they know them. you look at them, they're uber successful, and they're like, no, they're just going to flush me off. Yeah. And yeah. no, dude, like, they started where we started. Yeah. I mean, they're oh, yeah. just normal people. So For sure. And sure. I just, it just killed me pulling out those crappy little business cards and stuff. But I mean, everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah, you're yeah, trying, exactly. man. And you're out there doing and it. And like those guys too, I mean, just their willingness to help me. And like at this time, I've hunted prior to that, but I hadn't killed a deer. Mm. Right. So I'm not coming up there and, you know, pump my chest. Like, yeah, I've got these deer on the wall and stuff. Like I'm new to this. Like I'm still yeah. learning. Right. Yeah. And dude, these guys didn't judge me for that. They're like, dude, we'll, I mean, we'll talk about it. And Ambition is, uh, people can see it. Oh hey, yeah, you, you see the market, and you ran with it. Why not? Yeah, and, and dude, you're a really nice guy. <laughs> you know, that. Yeah. And that helps. You're awesome. Yeah, it's like you, that. you'd be hard to be like, get the hell out of here. It's like, why'd you just say that to that kid, man? <laughs> you know, yeah. nice kid. Yeah, it's no, like you're that. you're a really nice dude, and you're a very no, talented, that. dude. Uh, the work you do is crazy. Thanks, man. And, and so when you first started making pedestals, like not knowing that much about it, kind of like it's like an awesome accident. Seems mm-hmm. like. Yeah, a, a good coincidence. Yeah, absolutely. It's like you're calling. Yeah, it's like at what point did it go? I mean, I'd love to see the first ones you made just mm-hmm. to see them. But like, when did it get like, oh, we can have some fun with this? Did it take long for that, or about a year and a half when I really saw that there was potential there, and I got involved with some tax terms that really kind of sparked more of a creative side of me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just kind of was doing the basic thing there for a while, and then. Um, it just kind of spiraled from there. And I actually stopped, I want to say it was 2020. I stopped doing furniture mm-hmm. and just went strictly pedestals. Yeah. Man. Just because, well, I mean, it was, I was so busy doing pedestals and everybody knows how, like when you do custom fine furniture, dude, it's, it's so time consuming. Oh, yeah. it's so, it's and, so um, time consuming. It is. I mean, you know, as a welder, oh, yeah. I mean, it's, Sorry, I can't put a deer on this. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> deer on a couch. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Deer on a kitchen you know? table. Yeah. yeah. I just, I got tired of building kitchen tables and doing different things like that. And yeah. Um, by the way, what do you think of our podcast table? I love it. This is great. It's you, maple. Hate on us. <laughs> you know where we got it? Menards. Heck yeah, dude. But Eric, Nothing wrong with that. I made the legs. Underneath is where the real art is. I love that. The top's just butcher block. No, those are sweet. Trestle legs are awesome. I was really hoping you would just bash our tabletop. <laughs> <laughs> no, we might have to climb down the road and do something sweet. <laughs> yeah, but, I'll fix this. <laughs> yeah. Hold my beer. <laughs> yeah. No, it's awesome. But yeah, it, I think 2020 is when everything really started to shift for us um, with the pedestals. And for me, the coolest thing is just getting to see all the animals that go on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I've gotten to put my hands on so many 200 inch deer. Yeah. I have them killed, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, getting to be around them and um, just the excitement. And, and the stories that I've gotten here, too, is like, you know, I've done pedestals for people. It was the last deer off their family farm. You know, it was their kid's first youth buck. I mean, it was sentimental projects exactly, and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. And I know, like, when we met, yeah. it was back in, like I said, 2020, um, you came in for a pedestal for the Geyer buck. Yep. Yep. And um, just how incredible that buck was. I mean, pictures didn't do it justice to that until I held it. Yeah. And uh, no, it's just cool. It's it's really cool to see the stories behind it. And one thing I think about, too, is like, you know, one day we're not going to be here, right? Mm-hmm. But someone in our family is going to walk into a house, hopefully, if our hunting tradition hopefully. is passed on. Yeah, yeah. Right? And they're going to see that pedestal and be like, yeah, that was your great grandpa. You yep. know, that was a buck he shot. Yeah. Last buck he shot, first buck he shot, whatever it is. And it's... I mean, you can walk into a house and you see deer on the wall and stuff, but when you step back and you see deer on a pedestal, you're like, "There's something up with that." Yeah, you know, it, yeah. it's it's Pre- a story starter, right? It's, it's a, pretty for sure. uh, like a lot of the if a deer is getting put on a pedestal, it's typically mm-hmm. super sentimental mm-hmm. or like an ultra mega. Exactly, like, it's like exactly. Don't say, put him on a pedestal. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I want to hit on that too. I mean, I've had people tell me, "Oh, I don't have a deer worthy going on a pedestal." I'm like, "What do you mean?" Well, the inches don't measure up. I'm like, that doesn't matter, man. It's no. up, it's up it to matters you. what's in your heart, dude. Like, yeah. if that's your first bow kill, put it on there, man. Yeah. If yeah. it's the last time with your dad, put it on there. If it's your first youth hunt, put it on there, man. I mean, it doesn't yeah. have to always be about inches. That's right. Right. That's right. I mean, it's... It could be a crazy story that happened exactly, with that deer. Like, exactly. Just yeah. Well, dude, well, what's it. like... Okay, a pedestal, but you're also making, like, bases, too, though, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, like... Kind of, it's still kind of a pedestal. They're just huge. They're just huge. <laughs> They're just huge. Yeah. Yeah. They're just huge. Do you yeah. enjoy that more? Um, 
I, I enjoy them both the same, really. Um, the bases, normally it means it's going to be something pretty gnarly. So I did one for a Kodiak Grizzly. It was nine so, foot eight, so which cool. is insane. Holy moly. Um, Holy. The coolest yeah. one I did was a recent project this summer. It was for a full body deer and a full body mountain lion. I don't know if you guys saw that one or not. I think not. I did, yeah. Yep. yeah. That was absolutely insane. I mean, just think about the amount of work that tax service had to put in to alter those forms to get it to fit on the base. My job was easy. I just built a cool base and you see the dimensions, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was it was huge, but yeah, normally when it comes to a base, it's going to be a you know full body deer or bear. So all right, so say someone's listening, they're like, man, I got this big buck I shot, and I really want to get a nice pedestal. Like how like they get a hold of you, or mm-hmm. like how do they how do they do that, and then how do they go about like deciding what they want? Yeah, so the best way to get a hold of me is on social media. I don't have a website yet. That's in the works. Plug it up, brother. Uh, what is it? But yeah, so Minnick Red Cedar Works sells is our Facebook page. And then Minnick Red Cedar Works is our Instagram page. So just send me a message on there. We'll link um, it in the description. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So just go there, click message the guy. Absolutely. Yeah, just send it there. And I've got a catalog. Um, we've got our catalog coming for 2024. We're a little behind. Got some new stuff coming. So waiting for that to get done. But yeah, you just pretty much go on there and pick out a pedestal you want. Um send it to me and, and I'll get the work going for it. But um, that's something I want to hit on too. Like I don't ever want to become that company. You're just a number to me. Mm-hmm. Like I really want to be like, you know, you're sitting down with a buddy drinking a beer and talking about your deer. Yeah. You know, you're talking about, yeah. this is what I want to do and this is how I want it to be. And that's what I'm going to try to deliver for you. That's cool. It's so, personalized. Yeah, exactly. I just don't want you to feel like I'm just, you know, rushing out the door. Oh, you're just a number, you know, whatever. Yeah. Order number 10. We're just going to get you out the door. Like I really care about your deer. I care about your hunt. Yeah, yeah, and dude, I've gotten to hear some cool stories over the years. Oh, I'm I mean, sure. it's been I can amazing. only imagine. So, how long does it take you? And I'm sure it depends on the pedestal. What's an average time for you to crank out a pedestal? Um, so I've got a certain barnwood pedestal I can get done in an hour, mm-hmm. start to finish. Damn. Um, some of the more That's detailed, moving. it just really depends on if there's gonna be finish work to it. I mean, barnwood, you're not putting poly on it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I can get stuff knocked down a day pretty easily. Really? I mean, a couple pedestals a day, and then, you know, your finished work's going to just depend on how it dries. But yeah, so, um, gotten pretty proficient. I wasn't that way when I started out. Like I told you guys, it no took me is. two weeks to build those pedestals for that yeah. the Deer Classic. But, um, of course, I got a nice shop now, nice equipment, different things, so we're more proficient. But we can really crank things. So you probably have something that are like, I don't want to say run of the mill, but like they're the your base model. Yes, most absolutely. Base model mm-hmm. ones, and then... You could probably do, like, say a guy calls you, well, I like this one, I like this one. Can you kind of customize it yeah, and do a, a special one for absolutely. me? Absolutely. I mean, if they got a design they like and they need it a little bit bigger, I mean, we can do that. So, so but, it's not just everything in your catalog. Yeah, if they want something yeah, custom, they exactly, can Exactly, dude. If you got something you. in your head, um, send that to me. We can do it. Do you, so, uh, do you hate people who are like, just do your thing? No, like I love that. Me? I really do. <laughs> no, you're like, good. like me, he said. Yeah, that. yeah. We just dropped Doug's base off today at Old Barn and um, sat there and talked with Sam for, for your two bear? hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, Sam was going ham on that form. It looks awesome. Oh, I didn't know where this I far seen along. It yet. Yeah, actually, it's going to be at the Iowa Deer Classic. The bear is. Mm-hmm. Did you know this? Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I didn't, didn't know this. Know <laughs> I didn't know this. Keaton's like, I want to send you a picture. I was like, No, I just yeah. want to. I'll wait till. Hey, I, I mean, don't tell us person. anything, bro. <laughs> Uh, dude, I want to do this thing. He's like, I'm gonna send you a picture. I was like, no, hey, look, I'll, I'll wait till like the bears do on. Call Steve back. Yeah, I'll come right now. But I don't know, like in your position, <laughs> I feel like as someone just told me like do your thing. Like it's a really special moment if you're putting a deer mm-hmm. on a pedestal. Like yeah. they want it center stage. You know, like yeah. ooh, yeah. I don't know if you like this or this or. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah. Creative I, freedom. Just, I guess it really depends on the person too. I mean, if you just they're easy going, like, yeah. they do your thing, you know. To For do like welding job. projects, though, like when someone gives me a general idea, like, hey, just make it look cool, like do your thing. I'm like, that's what I love because then I get to be creative. I like to like yeah. go all all out on Absolutely. it. Like if someone's like, hey, build me a cabinet, I'm like. <laughs> What? Okay. A metal cabinet. Make like, sure it has doors. It, yeah, it looks like every other fucking metal cabinet <laughs> yeah, out there. Exactly. But something like, yeah. just put your flair on. I'm like, oh, yep. this could be sweet. That's how you get to, told that when people trust you. Like Sam's mm-hmm. like, hey, what kind of form you going to do for your coos? I'm like, just make them look good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. Just and he's the guy to do it. Yeah, just whatever makes sense. Too. Whatever makes sense. I trust Absolutely. Because I don't know tax derby. He knows tax derby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I trust that guy to be like, hey, let's make this badass. You might have ass. a good idea. Be like, hey, rough mm-hmm. idea, but run with it. If that doesn't make sense, don't do it then. Yeah. 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 You got to think those guys are looking at deer every day. Every day, yeah. I right. mean, so. Stupid amount. It's 
if you're going to trust someone, you know, trust them to, For sure. to right. deliver that. This might be an impossible question. Mm-hmm. Oh. How many pedestals do you think you've made since you started? Oh, man. It's right now it's got to be over a thousand. Oh, like as far as like it's cooking all shit. different, all different sizes. I mean, even like I'm talking like little pheasant bases and turkey. Yeah, bases. that sounds like, dude, yeah. Like I'm going to tell you like these walnut rings, we sent out 120 of those in July. Really? So in this year, I'll have over 300 product on my door by March 1st. You're killing it, dude. So I'm really wow. thankful. I mean, we're putting a lot of hours in a lot of hours in. Yeah. But, um, yeah. From start to finish. I mean, or from start to now, probably well over a thousand pedestals. That's, That's crazy. awesome. So yeah. you have a, a lot of wood. Blown, like, do you have a building? Do you have a shop built? Yeah. Like yeah. So I guess I'll go back to the beginning of this again. I started in the corner of my parents' basement. And uh, I've got the best parents in the world, man. Um, they let me start in the basement. And then I went to the garage. And quickly I grew that. Like, for two years. I mean, my parents have a nice house. For two years, my mom parked on the, the front concrete your mom, pad. Your mom was mad in the wintertime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you, were, uh, you were out there scooping snow. Out yeah, car. exactly. Um, no, they were they were amazing. Um, so I ran it out of their garage in the basement. And then when I went off to college, I put up a building. And I recently finished out a building. Um, it's 20 by 62. So I got a full operational shop. I got a CNC machine in there. Um, but like I said, we started in a 14 by 14 space in the corner of the basement. It's awesome. man. And, uh, there was definitely days, I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's definitely days that I was ready to throw in the towel. Like I didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but, Mm -hmm. um, it always gets better. It really does. And that's, that's every business. Exactly. And you stick those moments out. And, um, like I said, now we're working in a nice warm shop and I'll go back to, I came back from college on Christmas break and I worked 110 hours the week I got back. I had a bunch of projects to get out for Christmas and I'll let you guys know this. I was working in the garage. I had the garage door opened up two o'clock in the morning. I'm working out on the concrete pad too. Thankfully the weather was 40 degrees. I could still do some things, but yeah. Blaring cream. Um, Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know it. You know it. <laughs> Got to be fueled up some way, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and dude, it was like there was a couple moments there. Like I about snapped. I'm like, man, what am I doing? You know, I'm a pre-med major at Iowa State. I'm like, I'm coming back, working my business. I came back on a lot of weekends to, to run my business and stuff. And um, I was like, what am I doing? You know, it's cold and 2 o'clock in the morning and you just, you stick with it. I mean, it, it pays off. And like I said, now I'm thankful to be working in a nice shop. And it's like, dude, yeah. I'm thankful I stuck so, it out. Is it still yeah. just you building them up? My dad helps me a lot. That's awesome. He's retired and he helps me quite a bit. And that guy, I, I want to tell a story about him, just how amazing he is. Um, <laughs> This is back when, when I came back from Christmas break and it was 1030 at night. And I needed, I couldn't get the chainsaw started. I could not get the chainsaw started to save my life. You're frustrated. Oh, dude, it's I'm ten thirty at night. Ticked. Nothing's worse right? than trying to start a chainsaw that won't start. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, anything and, that won't start at ten thirty at night, yeah. you just want to chuck it in the oh, goddamn absolutely. garbage. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I had a chainsaw mill. That's how I milled my lumber when I first yeah. started. And so I had to mill two more boards. I was two more boards short on this project. And so I went in there ten thirty, and my dad gets up at four thirty to go to work, and I woke him up. I was like, I hate to bother you, but I really need your help. Mm-hmm. Didn't complain once. He got up, <laughs> went out there and helped me milled, got back to bed at 12, got up at 4.30 and went to work the next day. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, that stuff, I'm that's trying cool. not to tear up here, guys. But it yeah. just, no, it's, like, the older you get, the more you realize how much your parents actually sacrifice for you yeah. and how much they give a shit about you. How much you appreciate sure. it. Oh, 100%. Hard to see it when you're young. It yeah, is. No, for yeah. Sure, you know? But, I mean, he gets up and he goes and puts in an 8, 10-hour day. And then, you know, I mean, he didn't complain about it one bit. You know, yeah. he believed in my business and... um it's been fun. I got to take him on a lot of these cool road trips with me. And, you know, some of these dinners we've been out to, it's like, I grew up watching these guys on TV and now I'm sitting at yeah. dinner with them. That's pretty yeah. cool, dude. You know, it's, and these are the nicest people in the world. Oh, 100%. I mean, there's no ego there at all. Like, they just, they truly care about what they do. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And like, too, you know, my mom leaving her car out in the front for two years and talking about building up, dude. I mean, yeah. She could told me to go go after yourself. You know, this is, <laughs> this is my house. I'm tired for, of scraping right? ice yeah. off. Yeah, exactly. You know, but uh, you got to go out there every day and start it. <laughs> yeah, I think come I, to find out she had an electric start the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's like little shit. He's gonna work a little hard <laughs> yeah. for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a uh, that's cool, man. Like you know, to like put a perspective, like we're parents. You know, it's like I look at my kids. They're doing something productive. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll sacrifice whatever they need as long as it's productive. Now, if my kid doesn't do anything, <laughs> which, you know, yeah, whatever, right. though, like, I'll encourage them to. Mm-hmm. But it's like, yeah, uh, you're chasing a passion project, and obviously you're, like, good at it. It's like, yeah, I'll park out there. I get it. I do oh, the same absolutely. thing, you know, and I know you do the same thing, and 100%. Doug might not, but... <laughs> We'll see when we get there. There <laughs> you go. We'll see. If you get there. If I get there. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, That's no, awesome. it's, it is cool. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Like, it's hard to see. You take all that stuff for granted when you're young. Yeah. Because oh, wow. yeah, it's yeah, like, sure. it's a 100%. thing. You don't know any different, right? Yeah, 100%. And you're not, you don't have like the social maturity to like look mm-hmm. at it from a different perspective. Yep. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You're kind of stuck in your own world at that age. It's it's all about you, right? And then oh, the yeah. older you get, you're like, man, they sacrificed a lot, you know. Yeah. And my like, parents man, both I had, sucked. I mean, they both had great jobs and they provided a great childhood for us. And it's just the little things like that, like the little conveniences we have, you know. It's they sacrifice right. those to see us go further. But oh, yeah. I remember one thing, like when I found out how supported my parents really were. So I was a pre med major at Iowa State. And Doug knows as well as I do how fun Iowa State University is. It's the it's greatest great college time. in the world. Hey, Ames I is agree. a great city. I never went to a class there, but I had a lot of fun there. Oh, dude, it's great. <laughs> I mean, football games are great. Basketball games are great. I mean, there's great restaurants, bars. It's just a great place to be really as a is. young kid. It really is. And so I came back home after my freshman year, and I just really wasn't filling the pre-med route. And... So I'm the only person in my family that doesn't have a college education. Everybody else does. Mm-hmm. And my mom's been in education, been very successful. Um, she's got good degrees and stuff. And I remember that summer, I made the decision, I don't want to go back to college. I want to run this business full time, which mm-hmm. is stupid. I mean, No, it's not. It, it's awesome. not stupid, but it's like you look on it on a paper, you're like, I have no guaranteed income. Yeah, that's all right, and though, man. Life's short. Exactly, exactly. You're and young. Yep. Like, do it. Well, that's what I'm to too. Do I was it. like, dude, I'm young. I have no major debt. I have no major... Uh, I don't have a wife or kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if, if I fail, I can go flip burgers. I can make something happen, right? Right. So, I remember sitting her down and talking to her first, and I said, hey, I know college was your dream for me. I know this is going to be hard, but I want to drop out of college, and I want to go full-time my business. And she smiled at me, and she said, if that's your dream, go do it. And like awesome. it was hard for me. I was like, I didn't know how it was gonna work. Like yeah, I how said, you gonna say like you get a whole speech yeah, ready? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mom, I mean, dear mom, you got a PowerPoint. <laughs> my yeah, mom, exactly. my mom's gonna kick me out of the house. <laughs> She's never gonna talk to yeah, me again. My dad's exactly. just gonna kick my ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dear mom, this is why I love you, and I'm <laughs> out of I love you so much. <laughs> You're so sweet. Yep. No, exactly. I mean, it was it was tough. Like I said, she's in education. My brother and my sister are teachers, and my dad's got an electronic degree. But um, no, and my dad was super supportive with it too, and. Um, so like I said, you know, it was, it was tough. Cause there's like, when you get a job, you're guaranteed an income with a business. You're not, it's a matter of how True. hard you work. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yep. And I found out the more you put into it, sometimes the more you get out of it. Right. Yep. So, um, I'm going to go back again. Sorry to keep going back. No, you're fine. You're doing, no, tell your story, do your man. Thing. So you're doing great. I was, like I said, one of these projects I built right before Christmas, I put a lot of hours into, it was a dining room table out of Cedar and the client never came and picked it up. So I was sitting on all this money. Oh, shit. And I just paid my uh, booth for the Iowa Deer class, which was a good chunk of change. Like I said, I was a college. I was a broke college kid, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was sitting on all this money, and I'm like, oh, man, this doesn't look good. And I remember I was up in my dorm room, and um, I posted this table online, and I got down, and I prayed, and I said, you know, God, I, I just really pray you intervene in my life right now because I don't see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. And within 15 minutes, a good friend of mine messaged me and said, hey, drop this table off of that location it's sold. I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. So that Saturday I went to this location. It was a hunting lodge that was being built. And uh, this guy I'd never met before in my life, met through a mutual friend. And I remember he called my dad and I like two minutes before he got there. He said, hey, I'm getting you guys something really special before we get there. I'm like, well, dude, you're, you're spending like $1,000 on a table. You don't have to get me anything else. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't need so anything else. Yeah. He just shows yeah, up fine. just to tell you how great this guy is. He shows up. He whips out a uh, package of beef sticks. Like, before we talk business, we got to have beef sticks, boys. I mean, like, dude, this guy is awesome. Yeah. So I got this table, sold to him, and was able to use that money to purchase inventory for the Iowa Deer Classic. And uh, the guy's name is Bill Mansky. I'm going to give him a shout out. And it really hit me in the heart. Like, he put this lodge up to, uh, to house wounded veterans and sick kids for hunts. And uh, going into this, like, when I dropped out of college, um, he hired me to work in his lodge, building the log railing and the rafters and all kinds of stuff. So like this created an income for me for that summer. 
And he gave me an opportunity I did not deserve. I didn't deserve this opportunity one bit, but he trusted me in it. And a lot of this stuff was my first time doing it. Yeah, so I was right. like learning and going and stuff. But Figure it out. Um, no, it's like, like I said, you know, I was there at that rough time. Like, you know, is it really worth going on? And then you meet these veterans who've been in combat and have been through things that we can't even imagine. Yeah. And just seeing the smile on their face when they, they get behind that buck they just shot. Or yeah. I mean, you're just talking about deer hunting. It's the best. I mean, dude, it's so healing. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing, like as hunters, we got to continue to stick together because there's so many people out there trying to shut things down on oh, the yeah. inside of it. And they have no idea the amount of people that are still walking on this planet because of hunting. Oh, yeah. Because that healed them. I mean, dude, it heals you spiritually. Yeah. Oh, I people mean, are removed from it. They just... Oh, absolutely. You know, they don't get it. They don't get it yeah, at all. Yeah, absolutely. Like I had a had a comment on my Facebook page last week and uh, this individual's like, um, I just intend to leave God's creatures alone. And I'm a very biblical man. And mm-hmm. I'm like, well, Genesis 27, 3, God commanded us to pick up our bow and quiver and go out and harvest these animals he blessed us with. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what you're talking about, right? Yeah. You know? Some holes in your theories. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. So just um, roast him. But no, going back to that, it was just, like I said, yeah, I was in a spot financially where I was like, ah, oh, it's not going to work. And then, you know, it, it came through and, yeah. yeah, and Bill became a business mentor. He's a very important person in my life. And, um, if you guys don't mind, I'll plug making a difference outdoors. Yeah, of course. It's his organization. He takes um, sick kids and uh, veterans on hunts, and dude, it's it's life changing to get around that stuff. I mean, yeah. yeah, when you got a kid that's going through a horrible illness and for, oh, nothing hits you in the feels, oh, dude, Ugh. it's horrible. Especially you know you guys having kids and stuff. Oh, it's yeah. kids. And then they go out there and they harvest this deer, man, and their smile's so big, and it's just like they forget about everything for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's so sure. amazing. But, scary yeah, shout out to him, hands, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, shout out to him. A, he's a great dude. Where's he? Really well, good. where's his lodge at? Uh, it's down in Bedford, Iowa. Okay. Okay. Yep. Very cool. So, like when I showed up, I mean, it was just the shell and uh, tin. No kidding. And then, like, dude, I said I was, <laughs> I was amazed. Like that provided work for me the whole entire summer. That's very cool, man. You know, and and it led into more and more work, and he became a business mentor in my life, and different things like that. So, I love that dude. I love that story. I like, I like the. Uh, I mean, your story's rad because you dropped out of like a good college and like <laughs> pretty bad. You could have yeah, made a lot of guaranteed too. money. Yeah, absolutely. But I love that you did what you because, dude, you would have been down the road. You would have looked back and been like, mm-hmm. "Why didn't I?" I should have took a chance. Try it, you know. But absolutely. I love like we Why are you know, doing surgery. We have a yeah, handful exactly. of good, but yeah, <laughs> just stacking yep. up money. <laughs> we have a, a lot of good friends that are hustlers that mm-hmm. never graduated high school. That's my favorite. Yep. Mm-hmm. I love that, dude. I American love high dream. school dropouts that are successful. Yep, one hundred percent. Because sure. they full blown like, just pet it yeah. against the grain, you know. Like they just, I, I love mm-hmm. it. Yeah, like Trey stories, just the best. Yeah, our buddy Trey like the is best a story fun, heard. quick story, and yeah. Trey will tell it. But uh, real fast, he was like, he was in high school, and his teacher's like, "Well, what do you want to be when you get out of high school?" He's, I don't want to even be here. I want to be a hunting guide. And like his teacher goes, "Well, then why are you here?" And he's like. Good point and laughs. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> he, he, had like, that's he, awesome. he had like three months left in his senior year. And he's like, yeah, I'm out of here. He's, he's like, you know what? Oh, you're that's right. That's great. Yeah, I never thought about that. I don't have awesome. I never looked back. Just dipped. That's yeah. awesome. And he didn't regret it. I mean, that's no, amazing. No. He's, he's living his dream, man. Can you he's, imagine having awesome. that realization being like, you're right. Yeah, you are. Why am I here? Wait a minute. You know what I mean? Just walks in. What a freeing feeling that would be. 100%. Because I remember... I mean, I I have a two year degree, whatever you know, but like I remember being in high school, and they're like, basically kind of rushing you to figure out what you want to do, oh, and yeah. I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. Like, I don't want to do anything. Yeah, so None you gotta of make this a is interesting right now. It's like I don't know. I, I was often like, I want to be a welder. That's what I'm gonna do. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. know. I don't even know why I'm here to be honest with mm-hmm. you. Yeah. See, do you? I mean, do you still? Do you have to have a, like a GED or a high school diploma to weld anywhere now? I'm Some sure. jobs you do, yeah, but some jobs you don't. See, I wish I would have had that. It's probably good I didn't have that freeing feeling, you know? Yeah. I think like your resume now, I don't think you would need it. No, no, no. But like mm-hmm. uh, like if you go to plumbers or pipe fitters, like John uh, Deere and stuff, you had to have a degree, but... Yeah. Or like a high school degree. Just or the ability to pretty much read blueprints, right? I mean, that's what they want to know. Well, I mean, Get some of them dead. jobs, just as long as you can read, you're fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but... <laughs> All right. Can now, you read? Would you be able to do anything that you've done in your career if you didn't graduate high school? Or college? No, I wouldn't. So I guess I didn't in college. But who knows what I could have done if I didn't go to college. But you got a good career, though. I mean, you're... Oh, yeah. 
No. I mean, that's, I love we what need I engineers, you know, we need doctors and lawyers and stuff like that too, but. Yeah, it's just fun to think about mm-hmm. that side of things. It's yeah, like, absolutely. I just love, it's a, an uncommon. It is crazy to think about like story. one path, mm-hmm. like could have just changed your whole life. Oh, absolutely. Oh, every, anything in school really, yeah. can really change yeah. a big amount. Like, all right, imagine if I wasn't into hunting. Imagine mm-hmm. if you weren't into, your grandpa wouldn't have got you into like woodworking. Absolutely. You'd well, be a you'd, doctor. You'd be a really rich doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I probably wouldn't been able like, oh, I, like honestly, like <laughs> I was working for the city of Eldridge. I'm like, this would be a great career. Like in high school, like mm-hmm. I could just write Easy, this out. Yeah. Great I got, benefits. I got a whiskey ticket. Got fired from that job. Went across the road and got a job at the weld shop. Like crazy. Boom. Well, it all worked out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boom, well, it all worked yeah. out. Yeah. I, it's just fun to I got think a about ticket. that stuff. It's <laughs> it like, is. what if you would have never gone to the Iowa Deer Classic? Like, mm-hmm. What if we would have never been at the Iowa Deer Classic? Like, yep. You know, like, just. Little yeah, stuff, absolutely could have completely changed the whole course of. Oh like, man, how everything bunch of what ifs, but hey, we're doing, we're all doing good. Exactly, I think it's fun to no, think it's, about. And it's kind of cool though to see our businesses kind of grow at the same time. Yeah, I mean yeah. that was really neat. Where, you know, you guys were in a closet and I was walking around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then you're like we, those creepy dudes in that closet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's going on in that closet? <laughs> What's going on in there? Shit, man! Yeah. When we first met you, I thought you were doing this shit for years. Yeah, I did too. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I didn't know until today that you were as young as you are. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> that is true. No, we get that a lot. Yeah, so be doing pedestals for seven years now in the business for ten. So And you're twenty four. Yep. He graduated six <laughs> years ago. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing, man. Really thankful. You're killing yeah, it, dude. You I are appreciate killing that. It. Really do. What's new? You got any like are you gonna branch out with anything? Are yeah, gonna... I mean, I've got some new businesses on the kind of on the back burner. Um I guess I wouldn't say back burner, but coming out very, very soon. Um, more complex than this and kind of going a little bit different of a route. And um, like I said, they'll be 15 times larger in this current business. But um, really excited to get those off the ground and going. Um, and we're just going to keep keep pumping out pedestals and love it. Um, keep growing. So, yeah. so you do. have not seen your, your base for your bear? I have not. Complete surprise. Do so, you have a picture of it on your phone? Yep. Can we, me and Eric, see oh, it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, kill him, man. <laughs> I want to see it. He was going to show yeah. me. I was like, I, I'll, I'll wait. No, I was there. Done. Um, you might see it tomorrow or, or this week, and we're going to be there for the... Oh, don't look, oh, Doug. Don't, oh, don't, 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 look. don't look. Don't look. Don't look. You peaked. No, it's kind of uh, cool. I was there, so we got the bear up on the base and kind of talked what he's going to do for a habitat, so it's going to look it's gonna Doug, really sweet. It's terrible. <laughs> You'll hate it. You'll hate it. So, no... And I think the color should really make Whoa. his bear pop. So Yeah, that is amazing. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could do woodworking, dude. Like I'm so bad. <laughs> I at know. It. It's a I'm, yeah. it's a I'm so I'm, bad at it. Well see it. now you say that my dad came from a metal background and so he'd always get upset with me. He's like, Man, if this is metal, we could heat it up and bend it. But wood, you can't add more to it, right? Well, that's you know? the thing. Like, that's why I become a carpenter. Because, like, if I cut it too short, I'll just weld it back together yeah, exactly. and cut it. Like, not well, with wood, wood. You're messed up, man. And Dude, we got to get our addition done over here. Yeah. If we're going to, you know what I mean? So we need you to do some custom hand oh, dude. No, we're, cool stuff. we're redoing this over here. We got to get that going. Because, dude, that bear's going to be done that fast. Mm. It can live over here for a little bit, but we're going to run. Uh, because we're con- consolidating. We can't have a full giraffe and a full fucking bear in here. The bear's going to be attacking sweet. the giraffe. Oh, that's a great scene. We need to have that. Can you make a giraffe <laughs> pedestal? Oh, heck yeah. We wouldn't be too tall. tall. You know, oh, you know what we need to do? You think it'll be too tall? We'll what have does to that see. Be like eight or ten foot from the neck. I don't know what it is. They won't give me <laughs> an exact height on it. So well, I'm like, I don't know. Well, if we have room, because we, we have a subwoofer over here. We were talking about getting another subwoofer. Mm-hmm. And we're joking around about making... A, if there's if it'll fit a box where the giraffe sits on the base and it houses the subwoofer. Oh, that'd be cool. How that'd sick really would that cool. be? Heck yeah. It'd be like unexpected. Yeah, absolutely. No one would even ask how they're just shaking. Yeah. <laughs> I think just moved. Rattle the detail out of it. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. Pop that'd be out. kind of a neat thing. Have you ever done anything like speakers or anything in one? No, I haven't. That'd be sweet. That would be really cool. Uh, It'd be a great way to hide speakers in like a, a man cave or something, mm-hmm. you know, if you did them in a pedestal. Absolutely. A deer that pedestal that sweet. just plays Creed. That's all it plays. Heck yeah. A, cre- a Creed pedestal. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Shit. <laughs> I'm expecting awesome. Creed to be playing from our aisle this year at the Deer oh, Classic. I really oh, am. Nonstop. It's, it's got to be on repeat. Brother. Don't tempt us. Oh, <laughs> we're going to start. 
We're going to do the national anthem, which we're going to start the show with. Of course, yeah. respectful, respectful. But then yeah. right yeah. after, Creed. Absolutely, all day long. After that, Creed. It's Creed. A <laughs> Creed-a-thon. It's the, it's the national anthem, and it's the dad anthem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Creed's just going to be blurry. We're, we're going to be rocking some Creed. Everyone's going to hate awesome. it, but they're going to be singing it. Oh, absolutely. You can't hate it. Yeah, I don't know. So, so I'm trying personal. to map out, like, this, uh, I'll have to see when this episode will launch, because we're doing two a week now, so we're mm-hmm. ahead of schedule. And this could be at, right around Iowa Deer Classic. I don't Should know. Be. If it's That's not, awesome. what's, do you know what booth you are? Yeah, I think we're 903. I think we're 9. <laughs> oh, I have a graphic made. Nine, I want to say ten. we're 903. Nine, You're, you ten. and Old Barn are right across yeah, the aisle we're, from uh, us. Old Barn and I are partnering up this year and having a booth together. That's awesome. And, um, That's a great idea. Yeah, it's like that whole deal, too. Uh, John Mulligan got me connected with Sam. Shout out to John. Like two or three years ago. And I mean, Sam has been incredible. I I consider him another mentor in my life, too. Like that guy oh, yeah. with business. And, Sam's incredible. Oh, dude. it's amazing. Like I sat there and talked with him for two hours. We talked about we're, business. We're and, booth 912. You guys are right across the aisle. Yeah, down. We're down just a little bit. We're by big time. So 903. Yeah, so it's uh, you guys are like catty corner a little bit. Yep, on that corner. Yeah, that's yep. all right. So, yep. It looks further on the map. You're, but, oh, you're in Creed right territory. Here, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're in Creed yeah, territory. We'll, we'll hear it. Trust me. So we'll hear it. Is it it'll be aisle nine hundred? Yep. Come party, boys absolutely. and girls. Yeah, Sam's the man. If you have any he questions, is. he'll. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's the best. He'll tell you Sam all. Not just text or like life advice. Yep. Ask that guy because he's he's been there, done that, <laughs> he and he'll has. tell you about it. He'll tell you. Yeah, it's cool as hell. They're uh they're pretty cool. Th- this will be by the time this launches, it'll be here and gone. But we have uh, the Africa Clinic this mm-hmm. weekend in, in yep. uh, West Point, so we'll see. Hopefully, people show up. If not, we're just gonna have a party. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, we'll, we'll play Creed. More drinks for us, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it'll just be Creed and a bunch of South Africans. <laughs> no, yeah, cl- yeah, no, <laughs> no clinic at all. Do you think South Africans are familiar with Creed? If they're not, they're about to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Creed and Coors Banquet, baby. We're doing yeah, What's up? Man. Yeah. Absolutely. Dude, but. it's cool. I love your story is inspiring. You're a positive, friendly dude. Appreciate it. And I just like watching you kill it. Man. It's an American it, man. dream, man. Yeah, it's been a it's been a grind, but it's like I said, we've been out for ten years and these last two years I've really started to reap the benefits of all the work. Good. Does you it know, feel like ten it's years? Good to hear. It it doesn't. You know, it flies by. It, it really does. does. Um you know, it just feels like yesterday I was a sophomore in high school starting this whole thing. So, mm. um, but Dude, no, it's, it's... You have a CNC machine, brother. It's a lot of fun. That's a big deal. My dad runs it. I'm not smart enough to run it, so he runs You're it. You're all but, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I leave that up to him, you know, but... He's retired. Exactly. He's fine. He's got time to figure it out. Right? Yeah. So, keep him busy. I would make the dumbest stuff yep. out of a CNC machine. I would just like... Oh, dude, it's fun. Can you just like it programs off the internet and run it through there yeah you can buy plans and plug into your uh program and run it so it's like a cnc router yep yeah it's a wood router just a bunch of g code oh, yeah, so i fun. wanted it's to find insane. a guy with a router and just route <laughs> our our logo into here and then epoxy it in oh we could do it oh austin's cousin's got one too that's awesome oh, really yeah see man i'd be worried that it wouldn't work the first try and it'd fuck our mm-hmm. table up so Let's yeah, get it. we'll just flip it over you definitely want to do some test trends. I mean, it's it it's over. a learning curve for sure. But. That would be cool. Because I want to take... All right, let's get some opinions. We got the guy. We've ran, we've rocked this table with this this rawish look. Mm-hmm. I want to get it sanded all smoothed out, and then I want to uh, I want to stand it kind of dark. That would look sweet. Because it's, it's almost too bright for the camera. Yep. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, absolutely. No, it'd stand out good in this room. I just think of, you know, Sons of Anarchy back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they the had table. a big table and it had like yep. that table the big sick. logo, like You're right. CNC mm-hmm. engraved into it. I'm like, that'd be so dope. That would be yep. cool, man. What color would we do the logo? And what way would it be facing? Who cares? Keep it green. Green would be sweet. That would look really sweet. Like green or uh, like dark green would be cool. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. I mean that that would pop out really good. Okay, let me ask you this. I don't even think you have to paint or anything. It would just pop because it's mm-hmm. yeah engraved into absolutely. it. You know? It would be neat. I like the ones like with uh, where it goes all the way through. Like then they do like a different the epoxy. Ri- yeah, yeah, like the yeah, river. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, was, are really I, that's sweet. A, my next question was, what do you think of river tables? Because love them. you love them. Love them. Because I worked with a guy at Deer, really good dude. Shout out to Wade. He made all our soap box stuff. Yep, it, that's cool. Um, He's a good dude. He always kind of like laughed at river tables a little bit. Like he said, it's like the. I might be wrong here. Kind of hipster. Kind of like a cliche. Yeah. Thing. I think they're badass. I think they're neat. Yeah. 
I think. Oh, absolutely. How does the epoxy not and the wood not like separate from each other? I figured like it would. Uh, it's someone smarter than me it's, to answer hey, that. It gets all infused <laughs> and yeah, there we go. And it's fine and infused. <laughs> oh. No, it's cool. And some of those get pretty expensive. I mean, I bet thousands of dollars of epoxy to make some of those work. So, oh, yeah. I mean, it's expensive. They are neat looking. They are super cool though. It would be a cool uh, pop in here probably you know oh you got some of them guys that are putting fucking led lights in them and yeah doing all kinds of crazy swirls in them and shit it's, it's cool so actually i'm getting ready to start a walnut pedestal for an elk and it's gonna have some blue epoxy in it it's gonna be kind of like a river some of that river look to it but have you done cool. that before first one first one oh. yeah, epoxy epoxy is a it's nerve-wracking it is because you mess it up it's expensive and and it's you almost have, like working with glass a little bit. And you have a time window, like, as mm-hmm. soon as you mix it, and it's like... Yeah, you're well, what your do we put up, what, We just said barcode is the same thing, kind of? It's epoxy, it's the same mm-hmm. thing, yeah. I always thought how cool would be, like, so you got, like, the main epoxy stream, but, like, what if, like, they broke off to, like, where the mics are? Like, oh, that would be cool. Oh, that would be really cool. You know what I want to do? I want to take our booth, and uh, I want to barcode the tops of our booth, saying it down. And because yeah. it's like yeah, things just been, it's been a work. I think it's like a beat the rare, but it's That's awesome. It's due for a, a, a facelift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, little How many beers do you think have touched that? <laughs> How many beers have been drank at that booth? <laughs> at top oh. of, at top. It's tired. <laughs> the top of it's tired. It's you tired. know what I mean? It's just, oh, yeah. it's wore out. Absolutely. Well, well it, it sits in a trailer too. Like, yeah. The heat cycle and no the mm-hmm. cold and everything. It's so, an epoxy would probably be a good thing to put on top of that, you think? Oh, absolutely. Seal it up and protect it. Think we can get that done before Iowa? Be a lot easier to clean. Before Indiana? <laughs> With all the other shit we got to do. <laughs> Add to the list. Oh, no. we could just get some sanders out and sand it down, throw a fresh thing of stain on it, and then get some bar coat, just like we yeah. did at our bar. Absolutely. You'd be, be so awesome. bummed when you saw it. You'd be like, wow. <laughs> like, wow, you should have a guaranteed piece of, of shit. <laughs> Rush this job. So, all right, we, yeah, we, we did the epoxy coat on our bar out here. Mm-hmm. We used an oil based stain. Are you not supposed to use oil-based stain with epoxy? I'm not really sure about that. I know some of the stuff will not mix. See, because oh. I feel like you can see, like, you know, when you get a little bit of oil mm-hmm. inside and it, water. At least at the top. And it yeah. works yeah. up. If you get down low, you can kind of see, like, oily swirls. But it's fine. The epoxy. It's yeah. fine. I think we did a great job. Probably all depends on if the chemicals are mixing or not. Yeah. That was nerve-wracking. Well, it didn't help either. We probably just, like... Put the stain on, then dump the epoxy on. We didn't <laughs> let it dry or anything. We didn't let it sit. I yeah. like us, like, <laughs> yeah. we read, like, that time limit. It's like, we have to have it all done in 15 minutes. So we had, like, five guys stirring. <laughs> heat guns. Five guys. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. We're pouring, pouring different tubs. It's dripping like, everywhere. Awesome. Like, oh, shit. It was a that shit awesome. show and a half. Dude, but we suck. That worked, though. It's nice. I checked it out. It was really nice. So Yeah, yeah. You're like, all right. <laughs> Do you have a, a favorite pedestal you've done? I'm pretty sure you've heard that oh, question man. before, but that's a good question. What's your favorite pedestal? Like you're like, this is the one. Oh, there's been so many. That mountain lion one's up there. That was really cool. Um My bear. The bear, yep. Yeah, absolutely. As soon as <laughs> nice. you sign Dude, I'm sorry about that. I'm very impressed <laughs> with the bear. That's gonna be cool. Gonna be really cool. I should have just said, let me see it. <laughs> absolutely. No, you can't see it. I know. I can't do it now. You gotta wait two more months. Nah, we'll, we'll probably put <laughs> it up there as my favorite as soon as you get it. As soon as I get an autograph from you, I'm still waiting on that, Doug. It's been three years. Where's the autograph, man? <laughs> you got to wait till I would do I got to see it. When it's there, we go, there we go. There we go. That's um, going to be so sick. I don't even know what kind of form you're doing on your bear. I don't know either. Sam's doing it. Oh, you have no idea. I got nothing. You just told him to like, go crazy. I Ooh. did. He's like, oh, we're going crazy. He was he was working it over good today. It looks really sweet. We put the form on the base there. Do you have any pictures so. of it? Uh, no, he took a couple pictures, but I don't have them. You probably text him right now and get him. <laughs> now nah, wait. I'll see, we'll, wanna, we're gonna we'll see wait this. with you. We seen the base, but we want to okay. see the mountain right. person. Now I'll, see, I'll look at the form. I'll take a peek. <laughs> but no, I definitely say that mountain line was up there, and um, the one I did for for Kurt when your dad passed away that mm-hmm. was a really special one. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that's that pedestal was sweet. It it was heavy duty that it held both those deer. It held the, that guy buck the original guy buck mount. Is heavy. Yes, because I remember the first one we did, we were having some issues with the post. Well, that, that, that mount's abnormally <laughs> large. Yeah, it's a big mount. And I remember texting him, like, dude, this thing's big. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, no, it's big. I yep. see a picture, like, oh, shit, it's yep. big. It's fucking big. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's crazy. You know, I got that at my house, and it's nuts. Mm-hmm. It's the heaviest shoulder mount I've That's ever insane. felt. And I don't know if they something changed, because it's, it's from 04. 
But I feel just like, like the form they use at that point. Because well, that other big buck that's back here in that corner, that, the one looking the straight one? on, yeah, that thing's heavy as shit too. And I don't know if it's just like an old. Is that the same huh. guy, same tax service. Uh huh. Okay, maybe it's something he used back then, or could be. I don't know. Quick Crete in the base of yeah, it. Absolutely. <laughs> Stout just absolutely. lead. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, dude, I just they're neat. Mm -hmm. they're oh, neat I appreciate that. Really do. Oh. We'd have a hundred of them in here if we had more room. <laughs> if this place was ten foot wider, oh, we'd have a hundred of them. Man. Oh, oh shit, we'd have the whole wall. Sure. But I can't wait, dude. That pedestal, like, so this building next door, it, we're renovating it, right? And it's gonna be like one continuous, mm -hmm. like, kind of not not a continuous loop, but like a loop through. Yep. And like Eric's elk and the bear, we were planning on going there. That's but, gonna be cool. But if we can get, I don't know, it, might, it, would, it would be sick to have them all in here. Mm -hmm. But it would be tight. It'd we'll be so we'll, tight. We'll see. We gotta get everything in here first. That's the fun part about it, though. Mm -hmm. like we you had, don't know until you get it here. We had exactly. so much fun today organizing taxidermy. Oh, we had a blast. Oh, we were dude. blasting Creed and just. We're and you like we'll put the bear you, uh, right here. you relive the hunts. You we, really we, do. Oh, that's what we do. We're telling stories like, "Oh yeah, I remember this." Every buck. time we were a deer, we're yeah. like, "Oh yeah, that deer." And like, <laughs> yeah, did yeah, you absolutely. notice this guy's behind you, Doug? I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's my first buck. But then yeah, we we're like, dude, we'll just hell that we got this cedar wall and we have like. Mm -hmm sheeting behind it like we can just layer them up in here and go no, to town that's awesome that's the one thing that's amazed me over the years is you know nobody will flinch when you drop a thousand dollars into a food plot a thousand dollars into a bow whatever it is we put all this time into that split second we let that arrow off and the one time you're going to get a look at that deer in person forever you cheat it yeah so yeah. many people cheat it man and like it's a good point. I've been really blessed. I met some incredibly talented taxidermists across the U.S., right? And it just, it blows my mind the amount of people, like, they just, they cheat that process. Like, dude, yeah. you're preserving what you've put all this time and money into. Yeah. I got a guy to do it for Spin. 300 bucks. I'll exactly. have it in 25 days. Yep. It's like, oh, that don't and, end up. And go, go walk around the Iowa Deer Classic, too, and it will make your stomach turn sometimes. Oh, like, it's... You'll see 180-inch oh. deer, and you're like, what are they doing? You yeah. know? But, yeah. That cost no, me 300 bucks seriously, on a pack people, of cigarettes. People genuinely just don't know, though. No, they I know. Think. Like, they get it back, like, close enough. Looks like and a deer, kind of. And it's like, you know when they go there, like, when they're all lined up, and it's just like, ah, fuck. Yep. Nah, and this, I would I say know, this though. day and age, I mean, it's crazy the number of quality taxidermists across the U.S. I mean, you can find a quality taxidermist to do your work. Oh, yeah. There's no, there's, I mean, the internet exists. There's no excuse exactly, for taxidermists exactly. not to be. I mean... You know, if you're not a great taxi, you must like, get better. You get, I, mm -hmm. ho I hope the best for you. Like, everybody should kill it. Like, mm -hmm. but man. Oh, there's so many opportunities to learn. I mean, there's classes and. So there's no excuse, really, you know. No. Like, our buddy Chris Zeger is like, dude, he's a new taxidermist, killing it. That's awesome. But he's killing passionate, it. man. He went to the school. I know he has, like, good preference. He, like, he, he cares. Mm -hmm. You know, he's cranking out awesome work. That's awesome. You know Some what I mean? He care about the money. Yep. I always thought if I wasn't yeah, was a like tax streamers would have been a thing I would have looked into. I wanted to do it so I went to school. Well, I went to a game head course. I didn't go to That's school. That's really cool. School. That's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of got like, if I would have met Sam Gaylord when I oh, was you'd be doing, you'd be doing eighteen, right now. I mm -hmm. would be working for him because he Sam kind of like remolded it, dude. Like I I went to like Joe Meters where I went went to his game head course oh, that's really for so cool. long and he's like a, the king you know mm -hmm. yep and then uh like I was like oh wow you can make money and then I got out and tried to get like that's how we met Mark I met Mark yep um and then then we all met Mark I was uh, like apprenticeshiping with them when I would get laid off from my day job in the winter and then uh I don't know see, go, being around some other tax firms so I'm like fuck I don't know if I can actually make a living with this or mm -hmm. not you know and uh, I just just didn't pursue it I didn't yep. keep after it but if i thought about sam oh man. And, and i'm not saying that like you know marcus is the shit but with sam we got a full-blown operation like, oh yeah, yeah you can run this like a business absolutely yep. you know and, and you're seeing a lot of that nowadays there's a lot of facilities like that that are running it but yeah no but, old barn there uh they're killing it i just i just enjoy going there like there's the i know people. you guys have talked about before like there's some places you go it's like you're wasting my time sitting here Mm -hmm. Dude, Sam will talk to you for two hours. Yeah, oh, come shit. back here. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yep. And like the the thing I'll mention too is like their workers seem happy to be there, oh, they're yeah. motivated, and that's incredible. Like, well, I think he, I he mean, puts on a good work environment. Wants people to mm -hmm. like learn and get creative. But absolutely, there ain't no quick trip to to Old Barn. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, it's an all day event, well, man. A lot of times no. you're talking to Sammy, but isn't that awesome? Yep. You exactly. know, he says that a lot. It's like, yep. yeah, it is fucking awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love 100%. you. Like, you're awesome. He's like, no, no, it's all them. 
Yeah. No, Sam. It's you. you. They oh, have that's a great amazing. Crew. Yeah, you it's Linda. Linda. She's Linda, awesome. But they're the best. Mm-hmm. And even their forms. I mean, they're killing with their forms. Yeah, that's crazy them. what he's doing, man. Mm-hmm. It's right there. Yep done right there and so the unique thing about that was like in 2020 that was something that um that was kind of rough year for my business too because you know a lot of people were waiting on forms and stuff Mm -hmm. and uh no it's just cool i I encourage you guys to go check them out and support them i mean it's a local iowa company and yeah dude my deer is on a g2 form i love it they're great just sit there and look at them and it's just a great form it really is so yeah that's I love those. I, I mean, love if you're them. anywhere in eastern, southern Iowa, it's a no-brainer. Because Let's go pick it up. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's like we, We've said this a million times, but it's a tax service. It's a tannery. Mm-hmm. And you get it processed all in one stop. Yep. All right there. It's a redneck's dream. <laughs> it, really <laughs> it really is. is. <laughs> yeah. It is. That's what we said earlier. Like, oh, I'm, I don't know what episode. They need a Casey's pizza kiosk <laughs> and sell. They need a liquor license to it's sell the, It's the Casey's beer. of tax derby, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yep. If they sold beer... Nobody ever leave. You know? 100%. I think they physically can't do that because people just won't leave. <laughs> Beer in Copenhagen, they'd be good. <laughs> yep. You know, people are like, man, I'm going to drop my deer off, get a case of beer. That's like a deal. That's a redneck mm. deal, the billboard. Ooh. They had that. Uh, McBee's uh, Meat Market in Lamona, Iowa. Kill a deer, get a free case of beer. What? It's right off the interstate. You have to look it up. So if you have your deer processed there or yeah, whatever? Yeah, they'll give you a free case it's of It's still beer. a thing to this day? Yeah. You have to look it up. It's really cool. Oh, that's, that's all really deal. cool. Yeah. That's good marketing. Shit, fine. I'm yeah. going to drive hey, that far listen to, to a, listen to an episode, get a case of beer. Yeah, exactly. I would do that, but we would go broke. <laughs> be so In about broke. four seconds. About two downloads. I just need a beer sponsor. <laughs> just 150 messages. I don't know what Bush Light's doing while they're waiting. They won't. They won't. Maybe it's time to come over to Coors, boys. <laughs> you know, I'm not against that. Doug... Doug's, he's hooked. I'd hate it, but what I drink if it's free. They yeah. vetted us. Word on the street is they vetted us for real. They did. Really, we failed. That's we didn't bad. pass the test. Can you get? Can you want to take a wild guess why? No idea. I think you do know. You just don't want to say. What, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was the reason. Yes, Steve. <laughs> we'll blame it on him. It's no, easy. no, he's in our past. It's no a word. Idea. It's a word we say. Oh, faggot! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Yeah, there it is. Yeah. We're trying not to say. It. <laughs> they going to welcome on you boys or what? Yeah. yeah. Well, I well, get all it. All the shit they went through there a couple I, months ago. It's, yeah. yeah, I get it. Bro. I get it. They need us though. <laughs> well, they do need awesome. us. They need to go the other direction. Got to lean hard mm-hmm. into it, you know. But uh, I think it's a great badge of honor to not get to not pass it. Oh, absolutely. It Means sucks, but it's kind of yeah. funny. Yeah, absolutely. That's funny. Mm-hmm. And the word fag is hilarious. <laughs> hey, the, is. The, the most awesome part is like Bushlight actually looked at us and listened. That and listened. Cool. That's really cool. I think it's cool. Yeah, we have like that's very, a badge of honor right there. You we know? have reputable I just, sources that told I just us. I like they're listening. Like, oh, okay, this isn't too bad. In this. Not bad. Kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> kind of oh, fun. Oh, no, 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 shit, guys. No, it's well, awesome. Frank, come <laughs> listen to this. <laughs> yeah. To be to be fair, they vetted a few people and only one of them passed. Hmm. Um, we failed. To be fair. We failed fast. Failed real fast. That's all right. You're better off. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, guess what? We're still doing it. Yeah, F exactly. Yeah. Yep. If we had a partnership that told us we couldn't cuss, and so I was just like, what? 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 No, we're not going to be sponsored that's by That's what him. I like about you guys. I mean, you're real. I mean, you listen to a lot of podcasts, and they're A, B, C, D. I mean, they're just real professional, and you guys are real. That's what got me connected to you guys early on. Thank you, man. I mean, seriously, dude. You don't, like I said, there's a lot of fake people in this world, and you meet real people. It's just you want to stick around them. Yeah. You know? And for sure. I remember my dad was out um, wiring up my shop two years ago, and I think he ran into you at the show, Kurt, and you, yeah. you apologized to him about some of the language, but um, <laughs> yeah. no, he loved it. I mean, it's I have it going in the shop all the time. Like I said, there's been a lot of nights. I'm out there 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, dude. Yeah. And it's just, <laughs> you know, you're you're struggling, you're like, you're tired and everything, and then you guys say something just off the wall, and you just bust out laughing and lose it, man. <laughs> and like, dude, it's it's just awesome. I love this what you guys are doing. Appreciate thank it. You. I thank really you. do, and it's just amazing to see good people succeed in this world. It really oh, thanks, is. man. I appreciate. Oh, uh, bottom line, dude, it's like we just gotta have fun. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, it's too mean? short, man. It's too short, and it's like that's like, like we're kind of getting the points. Like, I want to be, you know, we can do the tip, tips and tactics mm-hmm. and whatever, but. I kind of just want to be hunting entertainment, too. Exactly. You know what I mean? If we can kill deer in the in between mm-hmm. that, that's like the best case scenario. It's a deer yeah. camp environment. Well, yeah, it's it a lot is, of people, really. it's like, these guys kind of fuck off. It's like, yeah, 
Of course. Yeah. That's what we do. You don't like to fuck off. It's the best. Try it. Yeah. We're doing yeah. it right now. You've yeah. never fucked off? Yeah. You never sat around with your buddies to drink a 30 pack? Because you should try it. Well, try it's like, it. even then, too, it's like the things we say, we don't always mean them. And it's, it should be obvious we don't really mean mm -hmm. some of the shit. But, but like when you read it on paper, you're like, oh, that's, that looks really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If a podcast just came out on paper and oh, you just dude, read it. It'd be like everyone oh has that, that text group with their boys or Facebook uh, messenger group with their oh, boys. Straight to jail. If a, if a judge read your transcripts from transcripts oh, from bad. your chat, you'd be like, well, no, I didn't mean it like that. And they're like, oh, you said this. And I'm yeah. like, no, Sounds I didn't. Sounds really bad the way you read that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, don't read it like that. Yeah, yeah why are you reading like that? Absolutely. Yeah, don't say it like that. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. You're just having fun. 100%. I appreciate the support, dude. No, dude, I, it's like I said. That was the one of the things I really made a mission in my life was to get surrounded by good people. And uh, you know, the older you get, the more you want to be around good people. And um, the big thing too in life is to not always think about yourself, but to think about how you can help others. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's going to help you a long ways in business. When you, I feel like a lot of friendships get ruined. And a lot of businesses get ruined when it's always about selfish intent mm -hmm. and furthering yourself versus furthering the business as a whole and furthering your group as a whole. Yeah. And, dude, I'll clap for my boys and they win every day. Yeah. I really will. I want to yeah. see them win. You're supposed to gas it's, up your boys. Yeah. Oh, dude, absolutely. And it's sad that the amount of people that will... And I had this. Like, when I left college, dude, the look on people's face, like, you're you're leaving college to start your to push your business. Why? And it, it's it's almost like a fear, like... A lot of people get a fear like he might actually make it. Yeah, dude, yeah. and people want to hold you back. Oh, yeah. They that's really do. True. They really do. And um, no, that's that's why I love seeing you guys succeed. Um, I love seeing other businesses succeed. I'll always do everything I can to help other people and mm -hmm. see them succeed. And and that's just the way God made me. I mean, that's just love the way it, things dude. are. And I mean, I don't get like you know. That's the thing with my business. I don't look at other pedestal businesses and see what they're doing. I could care less. Yeah, you should. Right. You, you know, should. I focus on what Minnick Red Cedar Works is doing. I show up every day and I try to outwork who I was yesterday. It's not going to serve my clients better by looking at what company A is doing or company B is doing. Sure. Yeah. It'll never serve you in life. Yeah. Just focus on who you are, who your business is, and try to outwork that every damn day. Yeah. Great advice. And, dude, dude, it's like that's that's the unfortunate thing I've seen in this industry is so many people get jealous so quick. Oh, dude, and it's the worst. The hunting industry is the worst for that. It is. And it's like, you know, they see you, they see the finished product, but they don't see the years where I ground my ass off in my parents' basement, in my mm -hmm. parents' garage. I mean, yeah, things look better now, but they weren't always that way, man. Nope. Mm -hmm. right. Dude, I struggled there for a while. Mm -hmm. right? And I'm sure you guys hear it all the time, like, ah, oh, you're getting a little too big for your britches, man. Or, you know, what, like, what are you guys doing, right? It's like, all right. Like, we yeah. said this last handful of episodes, we've literally documented everything we've done mm -hmm. weekly. Exactly. <laughs> for for nine, nine years. Nine years. Yeah. Look at it, yeah. you know? And and it's so easy to say it must be nice or, you know, they didn't really have to work for that. But the thing I found out with some of these big guys that have been around this industry is, dude, they ground their tails off to get where they are, mm -hmm. and they're still grinding today. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's day. not like they're just sitting back on cruise mode. I mean, yeah. they, they didn't still give up grinding. Ever. Yeah. yeah. 100%. So, so true. Dude. I mean, that's something to really sit back and look on before you start tearing someone down and going like, oh, you know, they got a lot of money or, you know, whatever. Dude, there's a time in their life they didn't. Sacrifice something. And, dude, they sacrificed a lot. Yeah. I yeah. gave up a college degree for it. I love it, and dude. I'm better off for it. I really am. I'm better I off for it. it. You know, I loved Iowa State. I had a good time with my buddies and everything, but, like, it was tough. You know, you see them out on the weekends having fun. You're like, oh, man, you know, I want to be there. But it's like, well... I'm building something. Yeah. You know, one day I'm going to be able to provide greatly for my wife and my kids and have great businesses and pour into all my buddies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had to sacrifice a little time there. But, yeah. Yeah. I love it, dude. I mean, that's the thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you were talking about you don't look at other like companies that are making all that stuff. We don't, there's podcasts we like. Like, honestly, like, we're really good friends with Aaron Blysky from the Fall mm -hmm. Podcast. I don't really listen to his podcast, but I think I know Absolutely. he does a great job. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I don't, really want to listen to it not because it's like a jealousy thing i don't want to like he, he's in his lane we're in ours yeah in this but podcast if he asks for, ask for if he asks for help mm -hmm. we'll be right there help 100 yeah. percent. i got a buddy, good buddy of mine he does the same thing i do wild shop mm -hmm. everything he called absolutely. me up a couple weeks ago he goes hey man i'm super busy can you come help me out mm -hmm. absolutely i'll be there tomorrow 100 don't you have I'm, a buddy with the weld podcast he has like a, a big wig in the weld podcast scene yep yep that's really cool is he local no he's in florida oh we just met through 
social social media yeah yeah i think too shooting. now like you know you missed weekends and stuff having mm-hmm. fun i bet like now they're like look at you and they're like damn like <laughs> now he's had like damn yeah. he's having fun i wish i would have done that you no, know? I, know I was that. there man i was working <laughs> i was working third shift and all my buddies were at college party yeah. at bars you know and i'm, at, Ooh, I'm sitting me. there yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was like, two yeah. o'clock in the morning you know i'd bring yeah, it, it wasn't fun at, it wasn't fun eric you didn't miss <laughs> yeah i remember it eric <laughs> yeah i wasn't there doug's passed out at outlaws or something <laughs> getting kicked out for sure <laughs> i had i had a but, mix i didn't go to a university because i'm too dumb but i got a little degree and then uh and then I worked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I went to work. And I was like, fuck, I should have done four years. <laughs> four more years. Yeah. yeah so I'm no, like, that's awesome. Sucks. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing too. Like there's other pedestal companies out there. I, I pray for their success. I yeah. pray they can provide for their families and there's enough for that everybody. They do very, oh, oh man, yeah. Dude, this, this country is huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you're willing to work hard and stay committed to a dream, dude, you're going to have an amazing life. That's yeah. like the trees, I mean, the streets, the tree stand industry in, in honey. Oh, a hundred percent. It's so cutthroat, but it's like, dude, everybody's doing fine. Relax. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> now. You don't own trees, exactly. brother. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. hundred percent. hundred percent. You know, it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> trees. What are you making them out of cast? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Let everybody do their thing. It's fine. Oh, 100%. Shut yeah. up. You know? Yeah. I mean, you look at like even the elevated blind side of it. Yeah. You know, everybody's got an elevated blind trail cameras. I mean, dude, yeah. there's enough room for everybody. There, there is. is. Everyone's going to have this, a preference for this over that. That's oh, fine. Oh, absolutely. And if you're true to who you are and you're real, and you're building a great product, you're going to stand out amongst them. Yeah. Like, oh, you're not yeah, going to have sure. to stand up and say, this is this. I mean, you're going to stand out. Stay in your lane, hustle there. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Now, 100%. It, it can be mindful in some cases to be like, oh, there's some innovation there. You know? Oh, absolutely. That, that's good. That's that, smart business. Smart business. That's smart business. But, but you don't dwell no. on it. Dude, well, dude, the, you know how many po- other podcasts like, how oh, kind of numbers are you guys doing? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know? I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't care. <laughs> right. I used to care. Yep. I used to sweat over them. Yeah, it's like it's good. I don't know. <laughs> it's great. Oh, absolutely. But like, I haven't. I don't know what we did last month in numbers. No idea. <laughs> we could have looked. I don't care. We're having fun, dude. And you're happier for it. Shit, there's one. Yeah. Way I mean, we'd ask. I'd ask you once a week. Wow, what kind <laughs> of numbers do we do this week? Yeah. Yeah. How'd that one go? They're fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't see, worry about you guys are, it. Three I mean, downloads. it shows you guys are truly <laughs> passionate about this. Yeah. Because I know there was a time where you weren't making money with this. And there was yeah. a time where you were sacrificing time away from family. And still are. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, it's, that's changed after this year, though. But it's your passion that pulls you back in. Yeah. You know, because there was a time where I wasn't making money with this. Like I was working, you know, side jobs to make a go of it. And like I said, there's times at two o'clock in the morning I'm like, what the heck am I doing? Yeah. You know? But I'm an it's idiot. Your, it's your, you know, <laughs> I'm still an idiot, but it's it's your passion that pulls you back in. For sure. You know, right. It's like, well, you wouldn't have, if you weren't passionate about it, it'd be hard to do oh, it how you do it. You wouldn't have yeah. the tools. You wouldn't have mm-hmm. the, the, you just, yep. it'd be tough because you might as well have just stayed in college. 100%. You know, like, gosh, can you imagine hating, not being, <laughs> I mean, if you're not passionate about it and you're doing it, I don't know mm-hmm. what they're, what you'd call it, just going through the motions or whatever, but it'd be 100%. hard to like, Want to have Keep any doing judge it. of mm-hmm. scale for anything? Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you weren't passionate, like we'd just be like, we'd still be. If you didn't have passion for it, you would be like, okay, I'm done. Exactly. I'm giving up. Yeah, on exactly. it wouldn't be worth. You would have no energy mm-hmm. for it. You know, oh, I've been there multiple right. times. Just all shit over down here. <laughs> yeah, passion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, that's awesome. I don't know. You know, what I mean? we'd still mm-hmm. like we'd do it sometimes in lawn chairs in my closet. Right. That's amazing. You know that's what I mean? That's American dream, dude. I yeah. mean, seriously. You know, boring to be there like, if we weren't passionate about it. Like, <laughs> just suck. do an interview. What do we yeah. talk about? I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's the thing. is like people are like, what do you guys talk about every week? It's like, oh, it's easy. What do you, every week? It's like, yeah, dude, we're... It's we're, easy. I always say we're dumb. It's like, we, just, <laughs> we forget about shit we talked about last week. We yeah. talk about the same stuff yeah. every week. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That is awesome. But That's fun. Well, dude, I'm pumped for you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, man. It's I really do. Awesome to it's see. Been, uh, you guys have been great supporters, and I really appreciate that. It's so, awesome yeah, to see you. Whatever we can do in the well, future. Well, Thanks for everything really you've done do. for us. Yeah, no, we'll absolutely. have to. There's my phone or somebody's phone. That we'll have to. Uh, there's stuff we could do together mm-hmm. going forward. But oh, man, I want people to check you out and, oh, and definitely that. get a pestle from you. Appreciate that um, for that sentimental deer, however mm-hmm. it is, size yeah, or meaning or whatever. So it doesn't matter. We'll get Killing some. It, uh, we'll get some great footage at the deer class. Oh, I appreciate it. That's gonna be a blast, guys. Yeah, um, we got an intern now that takes video. That's awesome. You know, it's just like I said. It's just such a cool moment. Like we're in the same row this year, man. 
Yeah. And, you know, yeah. back in 2017, we didn't even know each other. Yeah. yeah. Just it's saw crazy. you guys in that closet, dang it. Good, that you know, damn so. closet. <laughs> hey, we finally came out of the closet. Yeah. <laughs> Who's yeah, the creepiest dudes yeah. in the closet? Out of the closet, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to have a party in that aisle. Oh, it's going to be a blast. Aisle I'm 900. So excited. In that closet. You know, I just thought, mm-hmm. I'm like, how weird was it we'd go find someone like, hey, you want to come podcast in this closet with us? <laughs> come in this dungeon. We call it the hole. And they're just like, okay. John, every now and then, going to be like, hey, you want the hole? Or what do you call it? Yeah, I was I'm like, yeah, might as well. We always, just, we always our selling point would be like, we have free beer, and they're like, oh, all right, I'll go in there. That's <laughs> awesome. I'll check You're it in this out. Weird little closet. Dude, don't tell John this, but we used to uh, buy the twenty five ounce beers and put them in a duffel bag and roll them in with our podcast equipment, so we didn't have to That's buy twelve dollar beers at the that show because we couldn't afford them. It's like twelve oh, bucks it's a piece. Crazy. So didn't yeah, one year they go to like Tall Boys? And like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just Probably. know we'd go to Hyvie Gas. Yeah, they got a, a they got a bank right there signing loans for people for the weekend to buy alcohol. Yeah, so. <laughs> their Bloody Marys are good there, though. They are good. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I'm looking forward to that. Mm. No, that's awesome. Mm. We're gonna have some fun. Oh, dude, it's gonna be a riot. Well, dude, I'll link wait. all your info in the episode description. Awesome. Thank awesome. you for everything. No, yeah. appreciate yeah, it. Thank you for making the drive over. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, before I close, I mean, I know there's people out there right now that are probably struggling and, you know, they're in a time right now where it's like, ah, it's not worth going on, but dude, go, keep going. Mm-hmm. Seriously. I mean, you're going to have to work for a long time without people, you know, clapping for you, without people telling you you're doing a good job. I mean, yeah. you're going to have to work for a long time without the money, but it's going to pay off. For sure. I mean, it's always going to pay off in the end. Just be yeah. passionate about something. Be passionate yeah. about it. Keep putting in the work. I mean, like I said, we're we're reaping the benefits now, but like there was a time where I didn't. Mm-hmm. And dude, it's there were so many times I wanted to throw in that towel, but I've got great parents that poured into me. I got great siblings that poured into me, and um, dude, hard work's going to pay off in the, end of the day. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in this country right now where people are just like they're down and out. But man, that American dream is still there. Oh, so, yeah. seriously, the American dream is still there, and don't allow our politicians to ruin that American dream for you, dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's these United States of America, man. You know, we're we're still fine. I know things don't look good. I know the news is telling you things are bad, but man, just don't watch it. Just don't watch don't the news. Watch That's the what news, I do. man. Don't watch the news, man. We're we're blessed to be hunters where we can escape from it. Yeah. And um, no, the American dream is still real, guys. I mean, like I said, Minnick Red Sea Works is very small compared to these other businesses I'm getting ready to start, and. Um, Dude, it's I just I just want to reach out because I know there's people right now going through a lot of stuff, man. Just keep going. Yeah, just keep going, I keep love pushing, that man. And and that's the thing. I've never been a I'm a strong Christian, right? But I've never been someone to really bump it over your head, man. I just want mm-hmm. people to know that Jesus loves you, and He'll meet you right where you're at. You're not gonna have to get your life together, dude. You don't have to get your life together. He'll meet you where you're at. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the thing too. Be like, if you need help, dude, just reach out. You know, there's people out there for you. Yeah, so, oh yeah. I love um, that, dude. And, I, and that's the thing, like, with my business, it's, I've got the cross there. Um, not a lot of people know this, but, like, when I built the logo, the cross is, I've got a cross, the mountains, and a stream coming from it, right? So Jesus is a stream of life. And um, I always have people stop and be like, you guys Christians, right? And it's just, it's a cool opportunity to get to talk to them, but, like, I'm sitting here drinking beers with you guys. Yeah. You right. know? Like, and I have that's, a neck tattoo. And, and, and here, dude, here's the thing. <laughs> like, people don't realize this, and it, it really breaks my heart. When Jesus came, dude, he was with the prostitutes. He was with drunkards. Like, he wasn't building this facility and saying, come to me, get your life together, and be perfect. Mm-hmm. That's not the way it is, man. Dude, and that's that's something that, unfortunately, has been portrayed not in the right manner in America, but... Dude, Jesus loves you for who you are. He's going to meet you right where you're at. And that's that's kind of the way I am with my business, dude. I, I don't care where you come from, what background, man. I just, this country would be a better place, man, if we get back to that where we used to be as far as like, dude, we're all Americans. Yeah. We love each other. Yeah. Let's quit judging everybody. Quit being upset for other people getting ahead of us in life. And let's just yeah. get back to that that good route. So not to get off on this. No. I just, I just, I love that's the way I've always been in life is, you know, I've always looked at, um, down the road, man. I don't want to live with a bill of regret because that sucks. And um, that that stems back to the time where the last day I was able to go see my grandpa, I didn't because I thought I was going to have time. He passed away the next day. Mm-hmm. So that's why I've, I've kind of shifted my life from that point on. And, you know, that's why I'm so passionate about business. Like, dude, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not. So man. it's just really important. And that's the thing, too. Like, back with hunting, dude, I missed so many deer before I harvested my first buck. Mm. Dude, keep going, man. Don't don't get bummed out on things. Just keep going. Yeah. It's going to get better, man. It's seriously going to get better. You'll get discouraged, but keep going. Oh, dude, man. I Like Mark Reif, when he came on, I love that because that's how I started. I started hunting on the ground. 
Mm-hmm. You know, now I'm hunting in elevated blinds and stuff and got good equipment, but, um, dude, it gets better. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. you know, the more you miss, yeah, it's frustrating, <laughs> but dude, go shoot your bow, do something different, you know, right. work on it. And like the first, when I shot my first buck, man, dude, I called it my dad. I was crying. I was like, I finally got it done. You know, mm-hmm. I'd been working in this industry loosely for all these years and I finally got it done, you know, yeah, but, yeah. um, that's life, man. Learn from your failures, grow. That and, makes it sweeter. Oh, oh dude, yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah, if nothing that was hard, it wouldn't be good. No, <laughs> not at all. Do it. No. You know not I mean? at all. So, and not to get off on a rant. I no, just I love it. it. No, yeah, like, it. that was my mission. Like, when I go to talk at places, I want to try to inspire people. And I know you guys got a really good audience. And well, oh, Dude, yeah. I love it, dude. You know, I think the message is amazing. Appreciate it. I think it's stuff we probably need to do mm-hmm. more of, especially, like, in closing. That's a good thing to, like, leave people mm-hmm. on. That's, I got my knuckles say inspire. I'm like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I so that. it's like, be, be inspired, be, pa- and you do when you're passionate about something. I think you do mm-hmm. naturally. Absolutely. If good people are around you. Like, oh, absolutely. You know, maybe that might not, might not be your like direct intention to inspire, mm-hmm. but it's there. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, 100%. 100%. I so. mean, that's something with failure, dude. Failure is such a great tool. Yeah. I mean, I failed so many times in my life and it's like. That's how you learn. Dude, 100%. That's how you learn. 100%. So. Yeah. I love it, dude. No. You're the man. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Man. I really appreciate this opportunity. You're this the nicest dude I've ever met, I think. <laughs> you really I are. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, the top. I appreciate it. Nicest, it's coolest person I've ever met. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. You're the guys, nicest so. college dropout I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. You can take that. I appreciate that. I'll take that for sure. And I buddy. love that. I love it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll take that for sure. But <laughs> cool. No, guys, It's this has been a great opportunity. I'm glad we finally so, got this done, oh, dude. dude. I feel Thanks horrible. for coming. I mean, we. Every at the Deer Classic, let's get into the studio. I'm like, yep. Dude. You know, but life gets busy and stuff, but oh, yeah. That's how hopefully we'll come back. And, and dude, it was fun going over the depot before this and just yeah, getting get cut the, up and you stuff. You get the full depot experience. It was a good experience. time. Yeah. It was a really good Pretty time. Pretty good food? Yep. Oh, it was amazing. Pretty good, yeah. It was amazing. They're, they're the best over there, too. The only thing I will say about Illinois is you guys need to use your tax dollars better on your roads. Holy hey, brother. Smokes. Dude. I only live here for the deer. The amount of potholes I hit on the way here. It's crazy. Yeah. Holy smokes. Every re- day to work. I got, I got to rebuild my front end every weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my yeah. shocks are shot. Yeah. Hey, listen, but no, in all seriousness. I, I know. We suck. No, you're... Hey, Illinois like said, sucks. Chicago sucks. You guys are red beside Chicago, so you're fine. That's 100% right. And Rock Island <laughs> County, but yeah. we're not in either one of them right no. now. So. But no, dude, we'll I really it. appreciate this opportunity. I mean... Of course, man. I was talking with my brother before, and you know, I was like, dude, I'm going on a really awesome podcast. I'm like, it's, it'd be... My brother's a big sports guy. Mm-hmm. So I was like, it's kind of like going on ESPN, man. Like, <laughs> I, put, I don't know about I, that. I, mean, I put that. you guys on that level. Yeah. I really do, because you oh, guys, like, you. the the high-level people you've had on, and dude, it's amazing. Well, thanks, dude. So yeah, amazing. Appreciate so. It. ESPN. We're like the Heck Pat yeah, McAfee. Dude. Exactly, dude. That's what we are. Absolutely. But I actually know that that is. Can you believe that? Mm-hmm. No, that? I'm impressed. I don't know what he does. I just know he has a show. <laughs> he's awesome. He's no, like a football awesome. player? Yeah, he's hilarious. He played women's soccer. I think he was like a kicker, <laughs> He's a kicker. Right? <laughs> <laughs> a punter. Women's soccer. Punter, that's right. Yep. But yeah. he's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of crazy, right? That's yeah. kind of the allure mm-hmm. to the show. Like he, yeah. He has, like, open opinions. Like, I can't believe ESPN it's, yeah. <laughs> hired him. Yep. <laughs> Does numbers, baby. He's like John yeah. McEnroe. Yeah, for sure. His name was. was he a crazy fucker? <laughs> John McEnroe? <laughs> oh, yeah. The tennis player? Yeah. Yeah. He he's got, not that crazy. But <laughs> uh, no, I thought he was, like, a crazy guy. <laughs> no, John. But <laughs> Pat's not as crazy as John was. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, that's awesome. Fun. That's awesome. But we'll, no, we'll have to do this again. Um, we will. Especially when we get the other businesses up and going. It'd be awesome to talk to you guys about that. And, yeah, yeah, you want to oh, buy us? Sure. Huh? You want to buy us? Maybe. <laughs> hey! hey, hey we got a maybe! <laughs> <laughs> buy you guys out. Possibly you. <laughs> Doug, what do you got, buddy? Uh, nothing. You said everything really good at the end right there. Well, but, I appreciate uh, Thanks it, for coming, man. Absolutely. I'm excited to see uh, the bear. Oh, it's going to be awesome, dude. I'm excited. With a drink of beer. Oh, heck yeah. Talk about it. Heck yeah. That's all I got. Okay. Anything else? Nope. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Why are you questioning me? <laughs> Did I miss something? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs> all right. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just kind of Doug is so yeah. awkward. <laughs> Doug is just like looking. I don't Doug's care. officially Eric. not punching tags at the Iowa Classic anymore. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> all tagged out. He's tagged out. Ringed up. All ring tagged out. Season's yeah. over, boys. <laughs> Eric, what do you got? Sorry, no, I just man. want to make Doug feel Thanks awkward. Thanks for coming over, making the trip, and you know I love seeing your success, and I can't wait that. what the future brings for you. So. Absolutely, no, I appreciate that. Really yeah. do. 
So you're the man, dude. No, I appreciate that. Kurt, you got anything? You know what to do. <laughs> Go shoot your bow. We love you. Peace. <laughs>